Praise the Lord, everybody. Hey, this is Pastor Dale. Uh, you know, in the past couple of weeks, I've been I've been thinking about you know my life and about where I'm to set my mind to things and uh, trying to fulfill God's purpose for my life, or I should say, me allowing God to fulfill His purpose in my life. Sometimes we get in the way, don't we? So I began searching the scriptures, and there was a scripture that I knew from years ago that I really wanted to focus on, and that's the key word, focus, and. I found out that you know when you're focused on something and if you don't take your mind off that thing and keep it full keep your mind focused I'm telling you there's nothing in this universe you can't accomplish and I got that all from uh, book of Luke chapter 9 beginning at verse uh, 51 as the time drew near I'm reading under the NLT version by the way as the time drew near for him to ascend to heaven Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem he sent messengers ahead to, the, to a Samaritan village to prepare for his arrival. But the people of the village did not welcome Jesus because he was on his way to Jerusalem. When James and John saw this, they said to, to Jesus, Lord, shall we call down fire from heaven and burn them up? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. So they went on to another village. But I want to go back to verse, 50, uh, verse 51 because this is the one that re I, really want to, I really want to talk about. It says, as, as time drew near for him to ascend to heaven. See, Jesus knew what was ahead of him. He knew. See, he didn't focus on the cross. Check that out. He didn't focus. Paul, when Luke wrote this, he said, as time drew near for him to ascend to heaven, Jesus thought about what was waiting for him. He didn't think about the cross. He didn't think about the pain and the shame and all that he was going to suffer. No, he thought about the ascension. He knew what was going to happen. He knew he was going back home to the Father. Yeah, he knew he was going to endure some things. I mean, it was going to be rough for the Lord. Amen? I mean, extremely rough. Uh, so when I thought about that, I got, my goodness, can you imagine what it took for him to focus on it, to narrow his mind down to that one thing? I mean, we sometimes lose our focus. And a lot of times we focus on the wrong things in our lives, going on in our lives. But if something's going on and, and we know that we can go to God about something, we know that God has the answer. We know that God has, wants us to get into his word and read his word. We know that God wants us to depend upon his word. So when we think about that, we have to stop and think of the fact that we need to focus on the resolution. We need to focus on the good that'll happen. We need to focus on the outcome that's going to be for our benefit and for his glory. That is the main thing right there for his glory. So Jesus focused on the ascension. Had he focused, I believe that had Jesus focused on the cross and all the pain and the shame and all that he was going to have to bear, I think things would have turned out a whole lot different. I really do. Now, I, I could be 100% wrong in that. I don't know. But he didn't, it just amazed me that he did not set his focus on the cross. He did not set his focus, again, on the pain or the shame or the suffering. He knew he was going to get beat. He knew he was going to be, get whipped. He knew people were going to pull his beard out. He knew people were going to spit on him. He knew that the Pharisees and all of them were going to beat on his face. He knew all these things, and he knew he was going to have to endure sitting on that cross for a couple hours. He knew he was going to have the nails driven into his wrist and into his feet. He knew all this stuff, but he did not focus on it. He focused on what was coming out afterwards. He focused on what was happening three days later. Up from the grave he arose, and that he did. So he focused on the ascension, because once he was up out of that grave, and our Lord went straight up. So when we think about things, when we're going to set our focus, focus on, 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 on achieving that goal. Maybe you've got a goal is, you know, set in your life that you want. Maybe you want to be a, a doctor. Uh, maybe you want to be a pastor, God forbid. Uh, <laughs> maybe you want to be a police officer. Maybe you want to be a teacher. Maybe you want to be a social worker or a nurse. It doesn't make a difference what you want to be or what you want to do. Focus on the outcome. Focus on what you're going to be doing and focus on the outcome and what's going to happen when you reach that particular goal. Amen? So just think about that. And I just, I just think it would do us a lot of good if we would start putting our focus on the right things instead of the wrong things. Because so often throughout this world, we focus so much on the negative. 
And the other thing that I sometimes think about um, is how many of us get into the past. We, we think, man, we just won't let the past go. The Bible is very clear. The Bible tells us to let go of the past. Get rid of it. Don't even think about it. You know, when, when the Apostle Paul was writing to the Philippian church, he told them in, in chapter 3, let me pull this up here real quick for you. He told them in chapter 3, all right, Philippians 3. Okay, so in Philippians 3, Paul's whole focus was on the Lord Jesus Christ. There again, his focus was on Christ. His focus was on what lie ahead, not at the end. He focused upon these things. He didn't focus upon going to jail. He didn't focus about, you know, being in prison. He didn't focus on any of that stuff. In fact, the beginning at verse 12, we, we refer to it as the pressing towards the goal. Paul had a goal that he set, all right? For example, verse 12, he says, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. Verse 13, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Wow, look at that. Paul said himself, forgetting that the past and looking forward ahead to what lies ahead. We, in America, man, we are focused so, we're focused on the wrong things all the time. We focus on what happened 100 years ago, 200 years ago. Yes, we had a horrible time in our country. Yes, it was there was slavery. Yes, there was misery. Yes, there was, uh, um, what's the thing we went through? The, the depression area. There, we went through wars and all that. We focus so much on that that we, no wonder this country can't move ahead because we're so focused on the past, we can't see what lies ahead. We don't go to God. The pastors aren't taking the people. Let's get past this and let's go to God and see where God's taking us from there. I think when we start doing that and putting our focus upon what lies ahead, just as Paul says here, because if we were to focus on that, I'm telling you, man, there's some good stuff lying ahead for us. There really is, brothers and sisters. There is some good stuff lying ahead waiting for us. God has some wonderful blessings for this nation. He really does if we would get our act back together and focus on what lies ahead and what could be instead of the past. Oh my gosh, I'm telling you, sometimes it irritates me so much to look at the news and to think people are up. Well, I remember what happened uh, 50 years ago. I remember what happened 100 years ago. How are you going to remember when you wasn't there? All right? We got to need, we, we, we got to stop focusing on the history. It's over. It's past. There's nothing we can do about it. Absolutely zero. What we can do is focus on what we can become. A wonderful, wonderful unified nation. And if we could just get our leaders to focus on Jesus Christ and what he's got waiting for us, whoo, my gosh. I'm telling you, man, things in this country would change. I really believe that with all my heart. So that's all I got to say today. We need to focus on what lies ahead. Forgetting that which is behind. Just forget it. Let go. Yes, sometimes it's very, very hard to let go of things. I know because I've had some things happen to me in the past couple of years that it took me a long, long time to forgive people. It took me a long, long time to let it go. But once I let it go and I gave it to God, I am free. I am free inside my heart. And then I realize that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. That's in Isaiah 40, 31. Check it out yourself. No weapon. I don't care what you say bad about me. I don't care what you do to me. It shall not prosper. In other words, ain't nothing good going to happen from that. Amen. Praise God. All right. So just think about these, th these things and, and think about the Lord Jesus Christ and think about all the good things that are waiting for us. I think when we think about these things and we focus on the Lord Jesus Christ, forgetting the past, looking forward to what lies ahead. Oh, my goodness gracious. That, you know, this country could turn around, God could turn this country around so quick, and some wonderful things would lie ahead if we could just get the church on their knees, begin to pray, and believe God for a change in our lives. I'm going to pray that God changes your life and some great things happen to you. This is Pastor Dale. God bless you all. I love you in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'll see you again soon. Amen? All right. Praise God. Bye-bye. Hey, Alex!